So uh, we're uh, talking right now with Laura Osnes. Uh, she's got a few new movies out or has done a few movies with Hallmark and she's got a brand new movie about to come out, A Christmas in Tahoe. Uh, and I'm so excited, Laura, to talk with you about that uh, because I'm wearing my Hallmark hoodie. I'm a sucker for all things Hallmark. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before we get into that, I wanted to get this out of the way first. Uh, I know that the, the media is not always kind when it comes to, to the vaccination issue. And you've been on the receiving end of some of that unkind coverage recently. So I wanted to ask you about how you've navigated safety and following all those protocols uh, on stage because you're on Broadway, have been on Broadway, as well as on movie sets. Yeah, you know, it's been, it's been kind of rough. Um, it kind of breaks my heart how like divisive and polarizing yeah. this issue has become. Um, and I think at the end of the day, I was, I was just grateful. I was grateful for the opportunity to get to work with Hallmark. And, um, you know, there were a lot of hoops that we had to jump through, but I've actually made three Hallmark movies during this COVID time. And every time mm. I've taken every precaution to make sure that um, safety is, is a top priority on set. Um, yeah. And that's been something that is super important to me. I haven't really been able to return to the stage um, during this time because of mandates and things, but I'm hoping that employers will begin to kind of realize that it's, it's possible to uh, continue to create art and do this together. And if everyone is willing to, to take precautions to be as safe as possible during this time. And I've received a lot of hate, but I've also received a ton of love and support. And that's something that's been really encouraging to me. And at the end of the day, I'm just grateful for every opportunity I have to get to do what I love and make yeah. a life. Yeah, for sure. And I think what, what better way to, to hopefully put down some of the division and the divisiveness of this season than Christmas movies. Cause I mean, everybody right? loves Christmas time. Um, and so I, we can all use a dose of that hope uh, that comes with this time of year. So I wanted to ask you, how did you get in to acting both Broadway and, and uh, movies and how did the, the Hallmark connection for you come about? Yeah. Um, I, so since I was like five years old, I wanted to be on Broadway and um, doing theater. I began singing and dancing when I was really little and grew up in Minnesota uh, doing shows and loving to be on stage. I had kind of a big break um, after college. I only went to school for a year to study musical theater and then started working in the industry back in Minneapolis. And I had a big break when I was 21 and won this TV reality show called Grease, You're the One That I Want, which cast me as Sandy in Grease on Broadway when I was 21. Wow. And um, it was amazing. I mean, my dream came true. I got to play Sandy for a year and then have been fortunate enough to be in New York for 14 years and do six Broadway shows. Um, I started to kind of dipping my toe in the TV film world maybe like five or six years ago. Um, I had a guest spot on Elementary. <laughs> Oh, wow. And I loved it. I auditioned for TV film all the time and, you know, didn't book a lot of things for a while. Um, and then ended up getting my foot in the door with Hallmark through a friend of mine who does theater, but then also is a part-time producer, creative producer with Hallmark and kind of put my name in the hat. And hmm. I got a straight offer for my first Hallmark movie in the key of love in wow. 2018, I believe that was. Um, and Hallmark has been very loyal to continue to ask me back to be in their movies. And I've just had such a joy making them. Yeah. I mean, it's such a, a fun place to work. I imagine, you know, particularly around this time of year, Hallmark is known for Christmas. Right. Uh, you've got uh, your new movie coming out Christmas in Tahoe. Tell us a little bit about that project, the story behind it and why you're excited to, to be part of this movie. Yes. Um, so I think you're totally right. It's like the Hallmark Christmas movie has, they've really found their audience. People look yeah. forward to this every year. And I'm so honored to be part of that Hallmark family. Um, and the holiday movies are so great because they're usually filmed either in the summer or in the fall. So I feel like I've basically been celebrating Christmas. It's September. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, Christmas in Tahoe is about, um, I play a, a talent manager and um, variety show producer at my dad's inn and hotel. <laughs> 
<laughs> that rides the Nevada and California line. And so um, I'm in charge of putting together the Christmas show. I'm up for a big job in Vegas and I have a scout coming to see the Christmas show at the hotel. So it has to be awesome. Um, at the last minute, my acts and my show drop out and the movie is me and my ex-boyfriend, who just so happens to be back in town, scrambling to get the acts together for the holiday show. And in the process, a lot of hijinks ensue and um, <laughs> they realize how much they they need each other and how much they've missed each other. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I've, I have family who's uh, that live in California and they're not too far from Tahoe. So I was excited to, to see this thing. I was like, oh, wow. You know, familiar, familiar land there. Uh, so, okay. but I, um, anytime th these Hallmark movies always center on a love story. Right. Uh, and I have heard from several people and I've read several different interviews saying that you actually have quite a unique love story about how you and your husband met. I wanted to ask if you could tell us a little bit about that. I would be honored. Um, so my husband and I met doing a musical theater show in Minnesota. Um, it was the production of Aladdin of all things. And we understudied the leads. So Aladdin and Jasmine one day collided on stage and I had to stop the show and go to the hospital. He chipped a tooth and she was bleeding. And Nate and I went on together. Our first kiss was on stage as Aladdin and Jasmine. They actually get married at the end of the musical. Um, and uh, we started dating a couple days later and he proposed a year at our one year anniversary, wow. which just so happens to be December 23rd. It was like late, late at night, oh, Christmas, perfect. you know? And so whenever this time of year also, you know, reminds me of my love story. And um, that was, that was pretty much the best gift I've ever received on Christmas was a diamond ring. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Like, how, how do you top that? Um, exactly. But... <laughs> How do you maybe pull in some of that, some of your own experiences when you play roles and particularly when you're playing a, you know, a, a character in a love story, how do you maybe draw from your own experience and your own relationship with your husband for that? Totally. You know, I've, I've always been kind of a hopeless romantic. Um, you know, I grew up watching the Disney, you know, Disney yeah. movies and old movie musicals. And um, that's something that's always come, you know, quite naturally to me. Um, but yeah, I'm so grateful that I'm in a, an awesome, relationship my husband is amazing he's my total rock um and sounding board and life partner comrade uh i just i'm so so grateful for him we just we had our we've been married 14 and a half years already so um we've done a lot of life together and seen each other through a lot of things and yeah i'm definitely able to bring that feeling of like lasting love um, into a lot of the love stories and leading ladies that I get to play. And I've been fortunate enough to have a lot of awesome play opposite a lot of awesome uh, leading men as well who've been, you know, good friends of mine. Yeah. And you know, it seems like our culture, in addition to being divisive, we don't really celebrate marriage the way we should and the longevity of relationships and making commitments. Uh, and something we also don't talk about a whole lot is faith and the value of faith. And like we talked about at the beginning, uh, whether it's the COVID and vaccine issues uh, or or any number of, of problems, our world is so divisive. And I'm sure in the, in the entertainment industry, it's kind of amplified at times. It's difficult to stay grounded. How has your faith in God informed some of that and helped you, you know, stay at peace uh, in your own life? Such a good point And a great question. I remember when I moved to New York, my mom was like, you're going to be a lamb amidst lions. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think there, there was a grace, um, over me and my career for a really long time in New York city. And we had amazing friends, but it always took, it takes prioritizing that in your life. And our marriage was the same way. It was something that was the most important thing for my husband and I, and actually Nate and I both come from divorced families. And so when we got married, that was, I mean, obviously every marriage commitment, you don't think you're going to get divorced, but that was something right. that we specifically have been very intentional about, um, in our marriage and prioritizing that. And I think you have to find people that, you can do life with who are going to raise you up and lift you up and challenge you to become better people because the world will inevitably suck you down um, if you let it. And I think, you know, in this new season, um, my husband, and I just, just bought a house in Tennessee and we're spending some time in Tennessee right now and really loving it. And um, it's like you, faith has brought such a peace and you just, the trust and knowing that there's a time and a season for everything. And um, that God's going to work everything together for his good, um, yeah. for those who love him. 
I'm just, I'm holding on to that right now and um, excited for this next season and um, new open doors of creativity that I may not have ever considered before. Yeah. And, you know, scripture talks about how God orders our steps and we can make our plans, but ultimately he's the one in control of our destiny. And that's so hard as, as human beings to give over that control because it's scary. Um, but how have you seen God, you know, you can look back now and you can say, oh, that was definitely God who was orchestrating this opportunity. Yeah. I mean, as far as everything that just happened, I think I'm still like wrapping my head around it and it's just kind of, there's still a lot of healing to be done. Um, but I know that God has been faithful time and time again in my past. Um, I actually recently heard a, a sermon that, that kind of encouraged people to, instead of looking at the future blindly, using the mentality of backing into the future, looking back at your past and how faithful God has been. And Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what I'm doing right now because the future, there's a lot of unknowns and a lot of uncertainties. And that can be really overwhelming if you're just looking and not knowing what's happening. But if you look back and you see how God has been faithful in the past time and time again, and he has been in my life, I have testimony after testimony of that. And I have no doubt that he is going to continue to provide in this season and um, bring, bring purpose as I back into the future. (laughs) Yeah. And what a good way to look at it, uh, particularly during Thanksgiving week. It's a a time to be grateful and to look back at at all we have to be thankful for. Um, So that's such a good, such a good perspective to have. Uh, I wanted to ask you, obviously you have an anniversary coming up. You mentioned uh, December 23rd. What Christmas traditions are you and your family, you know, looking forward to as we step into the holiday season? Yes. um, I think my husband and I are going to get to go home to Minnesota um, for Christmas and cooking is always a big thing. Um, you know, there are family recipes that are always passed down and a part of, um, you know, our traditions. We love caroling around the piano. Um, my brother has three boys, so I have nephews and we usually will watch usually Polar Express or How the Grinch Stole Christmas are our two like go-to Christmas movies. Um, and then we have a big sleepover. Like I literally, my husband and I get in sleeping bags and have a sleepover with the nephews Mm -hmm. and my back hurts the next morning, but it's so worth it. That's so cool though. Um, it's really cute. It's really, really sweet. I'm, they're going to be at an age soon where it will no longer be cool to do that. Right. And so we're, <laughs> you know, we're, we're soaking that in. Um, and then, yeah, we will usually go to like a Christmas Eve service. Um, you know, my, my church back home always did a candlelight service. So I have so mm. many memories of like, you know, the, the candlelight Christmas Eve service. And I, it's a time to just be with family and soak in um, just the reason for the season as well and celebrate the birth of Jesus, as well as just, um, yeah, being with family and loved ones. Yeah. And, you know, the last question I want to ask you is for people who might be feeling down, who might be struggling after the tough year and a half we've had, what message of encouragement, hope might you give them as, as we're approaching Christmas? Hmm. Um, I think, you know, there's a lot to get discouraged and down about. And I think remembering that we are not alone that there are people in this fight with us and that God is for us. If God can be for us, who can be against us? So find your people um, who can encourage you, keep you strong, um, keep you grounded in this season. And yeah, I think having a heart of gratitude is also something that is so important. We all have a lot to be thankful for in the midst of adversity and hardship in the world right now. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely good, good words. I think uh, something that we could all uh, take to heart and hope, I hope we do all take to heart this holiday season because it has been a difficult, a difficult year and a half, but Christmas is always a time to, to reflect on, on all the good we have in our lives. Um, So the movie Christmas in Tahoe comes out November 28th, right? Yes. And I have to mention, I realized I didn't mention this yet, that the the movie also features the music of the band Train and the lead singer. Pat Monahan is in the movie, basically plays like my right hand man at the hotel and like my best friend. And so Pat is amazing. He gets to sing in the movie. My co-star Kyle Seelig, a fellow Broadway alum, also gets to sing in the movie. Um, so I think it's going to it's going to bring a lot of smiles to a lot of faces. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I'm so looking forward to it. Happy Thanksgiving and Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank um, and thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs>